Yes, yeah, so I, I think there's a number of different ways that payers are looking at this. So one has come into play uh, already with the CAR-T therapies. And that's a reimbursement model that says, you know, we will only reimburse when it's at a center of excellence. So we have people who really understand and, knew, and know this new technology delivering it. And then having a milestone payment, which is basically says, you know, in a short period of time, perhaps, you know, one year, um, or even some as short as 30 and 60 days, uh, have have payments that make sure people make the gates before they get paid or get reimbursements if they don't get paid is, is one model. I call those milestone based payments and they're usually less than two years and, and all have a performance based component. Another model that's emerging is around performance based annuities where you spread the payments out over time, usually um, more than two years, um, three to five is what I hear talked about most. So it makes the payments smoother for payers. And then you apply a performance-based aspect to it where payments in the out years might be forgiven in part or in whole um, if the drug doesn't perform as it was intended to according to the agreed upon metric. And then the third um, area where there's a lot of talk, but it's a little bit more complicated, is creating broader risk pools and perhaps carving out these treatments to a risk pool for people with gene therapies. It's a little bit hard for me to, uh, to visualize how that would work in the long run in a sustainable fashion, but I think it's really the third model that there's work being done on. Well, I would say the benefits and challenges of each of the model is sort of addressing the multi-stakeholder um, views and how that you know, plays out in each model can be a little bit different. You know, at the end of the day, all the stakeholders have to experience some change uh, in how they normally would do business. That's the manufacturer, it's the provider, right, get, who gets change in their buy and bill arrangement typically in these models. It's the payer um, who's, who's implementing new things. So, you know, uh, each model has its pros and cons for each stakeholder and they're a little bit different. Uh, and until we actually do these, we're not going to know how they really are going to play out in the long term. So we have to pilot and implement and then iterate upon that.